the human beings, the people. See the spiritual in the natural through sense and feeling. Everything is related. All the things of earth and in the sky have spirit. Everything is sacred. Our history is documented pre-1200 AD. So we lived here in this area for thousands of years and maybe even longer than that, than that. we just don't know. So because we were li living on the Chickahominy River, the Chickahominy River is just above Jamestown, so we had very early contact with the English settlers, in particular John Smith. Uh, as you probably know, the settlers were running out of food and about to starve early in the winter of 1607, and so John Smith went out to look for food to trade with the tribes, and we were one of the closest tribes, and so he came to trade with the Chickahominy tribe. And, we were able to get English goods in exchange for corn, and we felt it was a fair trade. I guess as a side note, we were known to be great growers of corn. We, uh, we were agricultural, so we had uh, big gardens, big farms, you might call them, of corn and other products, but particularly corn, and which I think is appropriate because our name is the Coarse Pounded Corn People. So I think um, that's probably partly where our name comes from and, um, and so again we, we had early contact with the settlers. We had a, a treaty in 1614 with England through the colony of Virginia. Uh, we were surrounded by the Powhatan tribes, the Powhatan chieftain, but we never were really officially part of it. Even though we shared a lot of the same culture, the same traits, we were different and we were able to maintain our independence. Eventually lost all of our land. We lived on the Chickahominy River, but about that time, around 1648, I think it was, we ended up moving to King and Queen, what's King and Queen now on the Mattapanai River. And we moved around different places along the Mattapanai River and eventually started coming back to where we are now. So we're about 10 miles from one of our traditional uh, Chickahominy towns. We had 10 or 12 towns along the Chickahominy River. And that distinguishes us from a lot of the other tribes too. Many of the tribes were small, maybe only had one or two towns. We were in 10 to 12 towns, we're not really sure how many. We were about a thousand people strong. Again, it doesn't sound big, but compared to other tribes it was pretty big. Most of the tribes were in the neighborhood of 250 or 300 people. So we think that was one of the reasons that Powhatan never was able to subdue us because we were much larger than most of the tribes. We had a leadership structure that was different. Instead of one leader, we had eight leaders called the Mungais, the great men. And so that would make it more difficult for Powhatan to take over too. So we had the eight leaders. We were a large tribe and our men were known to be great fighters. So we think that's why we were able to maintain our independence. The powwow <clears throat> is important in a lot of different ways to me. It started out primarily as a social gathering for Indian people in particular. We started what we call the Fall Festival uh, in 1951 and the Fall Festival has changed over time to become the powwow that we have now. As children, we used to call it our national holiday because <laughs> it was so important to us that we were able to have that, uh, that time to gather. And as a powwow, it's important that we still get to socialize with other tribes, and not just Virginia tribes, but from all over the country, uh, primarily from the region, but certainly from other states as well. It's a chance for the public to come out and learn more. We. I like to think of it as, as an educational event for people to learn. Uh, they learn something about uh, the Chickahominy tribe, they learn something about Virginia Indians, but they learn about Indian culture in general. To me, the powwow is just a big educational event. Hi, my name is Stormy Miles. I'm from the Chickahominy Tribe. 
and the style of dance that I do is women's fancy. It's a contemporary, it's not traditional like you would see with the leather and the women's traditional, men's um, traditional. But I normally would have a shawl on, you know, bright colors. We're known as the female athletes of the arena. It's a lot of movement with their dance. Um, it came from out west when the men were dancing. A female thought that she could compete as well, better than the men, so she dressed up like a man. She ended up winning the competition and she got it so excited that she started dancing up and down and her hair fell and they noticed that she was a woman so that's how the women's made to be. Yeah, part of, um, part of what we did, uh, I think it was in 1999, we decided that as a group, uh, the six tribes would attempt to receive federal recognition from the um, U.S. government. Each tribe has been talking about it for who knows how long. <laughs> 50, 100 years or so, so this was a chance for us to try to come together. We made a trip to Washington, met with the um, the director of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and he basically said, you probably won't live long enough to see it happen because it's such a long process if you go through the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So we met with uh, Congressman Jim Moran, and he agreed to sponsor legislation for us to be federally recognized. So the six tribes put together legislation that was introduced in 2000. And then, of course, every session after that you have to reintroduce it. So any progress you made, you have to start over again. So we, we decided that uh, to be able to do that, we needed to have an organization. And we created this organization called VITAL, Virginia Indian Tribal Alliance for Life. And uh, we would, we just started working together in that aspect. We would do raise money for Vital because um, we started doing it on our own as individual tribal members, and we determined that we probably needed to have a lobbyist to be able to deal with Congress because we were kind of amateurs going in trying to get legislation passed, and it just wasn't working. So we wanted to hire a lobbyist, and of course we had to raise money for that, and so. There were lots of fundraisers uh, that were had. Uh, we had a couple of vital powwows to raise money. Tribal members uh, from each tribe would donate money, or maybe a group would have a fundraiser and the money would go to vital. So we would use the money to support a lobbyist. We would uh, make multiple trips to Washington, to Congress. A big part of what we had to do to begin with was just educate people because so many people just still didn't know they were Indians in Virginia. It was just, they were just blown away by that. Even some Virginians didn't know. So our first few years, it was a, almost as much an educational effort as anything to meet our Virginia delegation, the representatives from each of the districts in uh, particular because there's more of them, and then of course our senators. And So we would have uh, meetings, multiple trips to meet with certain ones. We, we would try to meet as many as we could in one day so that we wouldn't have to make so many trips but um, there were times that we could only meet with one or two at, at a time so that was fine too you know we would take what we could get so again we, we educated on who we were we talked a lot about the history in Virginia and how um, we had been discriminated against and some of the things that we had had to experience and that was a, a real eye-opener too for some people and so again, it was a big educational effort. Uh, we finally got the bill passed in the House, I believe it was in 2007. And then we had to hit the Senate and that kind of died there. So we had to restart it again. We were able to pass the House, I think three different times, but never through the Senate. There was always a problem trying to get through the Senate. And then we would meet, talk about what we needed to do. Um, we'd go off to, Washington and do what we needed to do and then come back and report on it and what we're looking at now is what will VITAL do in the future because it was put together to get federal recognition for the tribes but I still see a need for it it will be a different type need but it will be an organization of, the, of those six tribes and uh, we talked about that a lot in our meeting this morning and that we hope to be able to continue to work together and on common issues, we know each tribe is going to have their own things that they want to do, things that are important to them. But there's a lot of stuff that we need to work on together. I think receiving the recognition from the federal government is, is 
it's big for us now and I think in the future it'll prove to be even bigger. If not, the question is on passage of the measure. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The bill is passed. I think that the big difference is the relationship that we have with Senator Kane and Senator Warner. We have the personal relationship, as you probably know, through Chief Atkins, Steve Atkins. He knew them personally, worked for her. We talk about that a lot, that a lot of success is built on relationships. And it's, it's kind of different from, uh, people always say, it, it's who you know that makes a difference. And that, that's true, but it sounds so crass when you say it that way. But it, it really is relationships that make things happen. And I think that was the big difference. We had the relationship with them. They knew who we were. We didn't have to educate them. <laughs> They have known us and worked with us for some time now. And it's almost like they made it a personal mission more so than anyone had before. The way we share our heritage, I, I would really like to see us do a better job at it. Um, it's more like a one-on-one -on -one type thing. If, people, if young people express an interest and they see an older person that they want to I guess have a relationship with. It's almost like a mentor type relationship. An, an old person will kind of take a younger person under their wing and teach them whatever they want to know. I think it was in the 1990s we had a program at, um, at the Travel Center. It was an Indian education program. Again, it was a grant that was provided uh, by the government. We were able to have classes on a regular basis at the school. And uh, they were generally on Saturday, so kids could come to learn beadwork, pottery, dance, leather work, some history, and I believe there was even some work with language with a few words. So that did a lot to pass on the different cultural aspects to kids. And then once the grant expired, then we kind of lost a lot of that. Um, so. Many of them learn from the powwows or attending the powwows. We have a dance group. Uh, many kids learn from that when they join the dance group if they choose to do that. And that's one thing with federal recognition that I'm hoping we'll be able to really put an emphasis on. So one of the things that uh, I mentioned earlier that we have a grant at the Travel Center and uh, that I'm the director for, part of that grant uh, involves we were doing research on the tribe. We're actually getting ready to prepare a petition to present to the Bureau of Indian Affairs for recognition. As it turns out, we got recognition through Congress, so now that grant is going to be refocused. But part of what we were doing was uh, setting up membership files, doing genealogy on tribal members, doing historical information. So we spent a lot of time at the Library of Virginia we're going through microfilm, looking at vital records, birth and death, marriage records. We spent a, quite a bit of time in the manuscript area, looking at old manuscripts from Charles City County, New Kent County, other counties where we had a presence. And again, a lot of that was to look for vital records about the tribe, but also was looking for any references to the tribe in in county minutes or court records or whatever it might be. So we, we have spent quite a bit of time doing that. Again, we're just looking for references to the tribe because part of what the administrative process requires is you have to prove your existence from before 1900 up until the current day. And we had plenty of records from the tribe because from 1901 forward, we were meeting on a regular basis and we were keeping minutes of those meetings. So we have all of those records available to us. And so we were looking for more pre-1900. Uh, that's where a lot of our focus has been as far as the research is concerned. On the one hand, as uh, someone who was trying to put a petition together or, or help them do that, it's frustrating. But then on the other hand, I'm glad they are strict because when they recognize a tribe, they truly are a tribe. It's not a group that was put together. Yeah.
Hey!